Your job as a gardener just got easier because instead of wondering which spray to use for every bug, you can relax. If you let them, beneficial and predatory bugs and their kids will be your pest control service. I'm Angela from Growing in the Garden. My garden's in Mesa, Arizona. I want to help you succeed, even if you're gardening in tough conditions. Today, I'm gonna to teach you about beneficial and predatory insects and the amazing things that they do. But most importantly, I'll teach you how to attract and keep them in your garden. The first thing is to accept and expect that there will be bugs in your garden. When you see a bug, instead of trying to kill it, take time to identify it. 99% of insects are either beneficial or benign. Only 1% cause damage. It feels like a lot more than that sometimes. You don't have to take my word for it. I'll link to the studies and sources I used for the information in this video in the description. In the garden, insects are not just pests. Beneficial insects are a necessary part of the ecosystem. Technology has made identifying insects much easier. You can now use the camera on your phone to take a picture of the insect and use Visual Lookup or Google Lens to identify it. There are also apps like Seek and Bug ID. Learn about each of the bugs you identify. Take the time to learn about the common beneficial and harmful insects in all of their stages that are common in your area. Most of us know about ladybugs, but there are many more that also play a significant role in pest control in the garden. Remember, the adults and larvae, or kids, of these predatory and beneficial insects are helping you by preying on harmful insects. Here are some common types of beneficial and predatory insects and the pests they help you with. Assassin bugs can help control nearly any insect, including hornworms, beetles, aphids, and caterpillars. Lacewings help manage aphids, beetle larvae, mealybugs, spider mites, caterpillars, whiteflies, and more. Surfid flies help with aphids, young cabbage worms, thrips, leafhoppers, scales, mealybugs, and many small caterpillars. Tachinid flies help manage caterpillars, beetles, cutworms, bugs, larva, squash bugs, and more. Parasitoid wasps are amazing. They help manage so many different bugs, things like aphids, beetle larvae, cabbage worms, beetles, cutworms, leaf miners, mealybugs, hornworms, whiteflies, and many more. Spiders help manage insect eggs, beetles, aphids, cockroaches, cutworms, fire ants, bugs, mites, and many more. Praying mantids help with moths, crickets and grasshoppers, flies, beetles, and caterpillars, but they are non-discriminatory and will eat the good guys too. How does it work? The predator-prey cycle is at the heart of natural pest control. In this cycle, the prey, or the pests, attract the predators, the beneficial and predatory insects, by providing them with food. The predators then keep the pest populations in check and prevent damage to your garden. For example, lacewings and ladybugs are attracted to gardens with a high aphid population, which they feed on. By preying on the aphids, ladybugs and lacewings help control their population. In this cycle, the pest and predator populations are going to go up and down, but they are never zero. We may begin noticing pests just as their numbers peak, and that is the level that will lure beneficial insects. But if we spray off every aphid, there may be lacewing and ladybug eggs or larvae already there, and we're spraying them off too. Instead, we need to be patient and give beneficial insects time to show up and do their job. So besides having an aphid infestation, what else can we do to encourage and support beneficial insects? The first and most important, no pesticides. Pesticides may kill the harmful insects, but they also harm the beneficial ones. And unfortunately, the remaining pests are often resistant to the pesticide, which creates a new set of problems. If you must use pest control, opt for organic solutions like hand picking, row covers, or spraying off with water. This approach helps preserve beneficial insects while managing pests. 
Avoid neem oil, which can interrupt bugs' biological processes and is not good for beneficial insects. The next thing you can do to attract beneficial and predatory insects is to add flowering plants to your yard and garden. Don't make them travel too far from home to find habitat and food sources. The more flowering plants with staggered bloom times, the better. Get ready to screenshot these lists and then add them to your yard and garden beds. Here are some annuals they love. Perennials are long-lived plants that return year after year. If possible, choose native plants for your garden. Native plants support the native wildlife in your area. The best perennial plants to attract beneficial insects will vary by location. These are good choices for the Sonoran Desert. Have areas of your garden that grow a little wild. These are spots intentionally left unmanicured and cleaned up that can provide habitats for beneficial insects and paratozoids. Here are some ways to do that. Hold off cleaning up some parts of your yard at the end of the season. The leaves and dead stems can provide habitat through the cooler months. Many insects often hibernate or overwinter in hollow stems. So leaving old stems in place gives them a reason to stay in your yard. Allow vegetables and herbs to flower. Don't clean them up right away. When these plants reach the end of their life cycle, they often produce flowers in a process called bolting. These flowers provide nectar and pollen, essential food sources for adult beneficial insects. Cilantro, dill, parsley, and fennel are favorite choices for many beneficials. And finally, you might choose to introduce beneficial insects into your garden. If you do this, use some place like heirloom roses that gets its insects from trusted insectaries. Don't get them at the hardware store. Once you stop using pesticides and make your yard attractive to beneficial insects, your best tool will be observation and your own experiences. When you notice pests, you can decide if you want to take action or pause and observe and see what happens. Sometimes, like with squash bugs or Japanese beetles, the answer is to hand pick Remove adults and eggs right away and stay vigilant. With other pests, there may be times you decide to wait and let nature come back into balance. There will probably be lost plants along the way, but try not to reach for a spray bottle every time you see a bug. Instead, grab a magnifying glass and a front row seat to the action and drama unfolding in your garden. Don't be afraid to allow bugs back into your garden. A balanced ecosystem doesn't happen overnight or in one season. Be patient.